Hi there, everyone. My name is Sally Murphy, and I'm the Chief Inspiration Officer at Inspire Ag. I've been asked by the fabulous crew at Gibbs Dairy to provide you with a little bit of a snapshot into what we got up to in my workshop at the 2023 muster. This snapshot is for those that weren't able to attend or those that perhaps want to reflect on, on what we went through on the day. So essentially my workshop was about providing a safe place for participants to understand who they are, how they naturally think, act and communicate and get them to build some self-awareness around the impact that they can have on a team, whether they're a part of the team or whether they are leading the team. So one of the first things we did was look at how things have changed over a period of time. So the industrial revolution has really had a significant impact on our industry and changed the way that we farm. Through As we've moved through the industrial revolutions, we've gone from mechanisation, mass production, automation, and now we're operating in this era of the Internet of Things where everything is interconnected with data. The way that we lead and manage our team hasn't really changed all that much over time. It's had some name changes, but it really hasn't, the methodology really hasn't changed. So the way that we lead our teams has been rather authoritative or very carrot and stick, or if I can say it in another way that I'm sure we'll all understand. If you don't like it, mate, there's the gate. I really encourage people at the workshop to think about the importance of operating from a relationship aspect rather than a transactional nature. One of the most important premises of this workshop was, again, that safe space to reflect on, on who you naturally are. So the, it's really important to consider this because the way that we naturally think, act and communicate can have an impact on our businesses ranging anywhere from 21 to 200%. And I went a little bit deeper into this during the keynote presentation at the dinner. I shared with the group some insights about a study that was done at Virginia Tech University that looked at farming family businesses, for example, who those that communicated regularly had regular business meetings, gave everybody an opportunity to have a voice, were in fact 21% more profitable than those that decided not to operate in that way. So that was just one small example of the importance of having, having a really strong self-awareness around this. So in my consulting business, I lean quite heavily on behavioural tools like the DISC model and um, help individuals understand their natural strengths, their opportunities for growth, and also to help them to build some emotional intelligence about the way that they operate. So the premise of the DISC model is essentially that there are four different styles. So you have a dominance, an influence, a steadiness, and a compliance. So we dug a little bit deeper to understand a little bit more about the behaviour styles and how they naturally show up. So firstly, we looked at the dominance. So you can see on the screen there, I've got some descriptive words like direct, competitive, driven, determined and decisive. So other ways to characterise a dominant personality is that they are very results-driven people. They are big picture, bottom line, very fast-paced. We then looked at the influence style. So these are really enthusiastic, influential and sociable people. These are team players. They're really focused on the relationship and they're kind of like the, the team cheerleaders, if you like. The steadiness uh, personality, they are supportive, resilient, really encouraging. These are the people that really focus on fairness and equality. They love cooperation and these are your dependables. And then you have your compliance um, behaviour styles, so diligent, accurate, conscientious. These people value quality. They love accuracy, like it's Accuracy is just so important to them in the way that they operate, very details orientated, and they value competency over many other things. So one of the ways that I've been taught to think about, you know, if I'm if I'm stuck in a conversation that I'm having and the message is not quite getting through, is thinking about how I'm communicating, which is my preference, in comparison to how somebody else might be receiving that message. And so um, my mentors have got me to think about this in terms of a radar. So I, 
the first thing I do is look at, are they a reserved personality or are they an outgoing personality? So I figure out whether they're above the line or below the line. I then look at, are they a task oriented person or are they a people oriented person? And think about which side of the line they're on. And this usually gives me a reasonably quick understanding of where somebody might sit. So after the quickest and dirtiest lesson ever in behavior styles, I then show four videos of celebrity chefs to see if they could pick up on what the predominant behavior style was of these individuals. And I have to say they did pretty well out of that. What we then did was um, we used an activity where we built a Lego structure to the team went about in, in undertaking this activity, but it was an activity to give people a safe space to observe other behavioural styles to see uh, whether they could really adjust the way that they led. So at the conclusion of the activity, we looked at some hints and tips. Now, if you want to have a bit more of a, a look at this, um, feel free to pause the video at this point and just have a bit of a look at some, um, I've given three hints of what to do and what not to do for each behaviour style. But the thing that I wanted to, um, to leave participants with was that the understanding that no one behaviour style is better than the other. We are just all different. What we we can pick things up in a in a behavioural assessment, uh, which can tell us what we what we are, which particular style we are. But what we don't see is similar to this iceberg theory. What we don't see is what uh, has happened to people, what their skills, what their values are, what their personal experiences are, and that can sometimes influence the way that people naturally show up in a team. If you'd like to find out more about behaviour styles or anything that I've covered in this mini presentation, please feel free to reach out to me. My details are on the screen.